Hey guys, Henning and Morten here from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we're going to do a quick demonstration of how to speed up your modeling workflow inside of Maya. In this one, we're using Maya 2018, but most of these apply for all versions or most newer versions of Maya. So the guide here is going to be split into three parts. We're going to have marking menus, hotkeys, and then some general tips and tricks. So first off, marking menus. So marking menus can be activated in a number of different ways. They're contextual based on what you've selected or haven't selected. So when nothing is selected, you hold down shift and the right mouse button, you get the creation um, menu up where you can have spheres, cubes, whatever. So this is just a really quick way to create primitives. The super cool thing about marking menus is that they don't really care about being visually selected. So that, you know they, they're outside the human scope of <laughs> perception. So you can move really quickly. Let's say you hold down shift and right mouse button and you just go to the right, you create a sphere. So this is really easy to, to do even with we have nested marking menu, so something within something else. You can like go to the right and then go upright, and it'll it'll cor correctly create whatever you've you've hit there. If you get used to use modeling with marking menus, you will look like a modeling genius. You'll be so fast that people won't actually know what you're doing. Oh, but you. Yeah, it will just be but you, and you have merged subverts or whatnot. So one of the cool marking menus, the ones that I use a lot, is for your transforms here. So if you hold down, if you select an object, you hold down shift control, right mouse button, you can go into the standard world mode, right, where your pivot is just aligned to the world. If you go to object, for example, it's now aligned to the object. So super quick way to just change between these modes. So one super cool feature in the uh, transform marking menu is the axis. So if you go to axis and you hit normal, Let's say you select some vertices here. Now you have a transform gizmo where each, like the handle of each vertex uh, edge or face or whatever points to the normal. So once you start moving it along, there has to be N, it moves it in and out based on the normal. If you were, if you do any of the other ones, it's just super weird, but N for normal moves it in and out. This is really practical. We go to our amazing sausage test shape here. A pretty good modeler. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to shrink out, let's say you have, you have a selection here and you have a selection here. If you were to go, you wanted to shrink this in and out, you could do this and you shrink this in, but it's a little weird. Then you go here, you shrink this in, that doesn't really work. Now, if you select these, let's go back into our axis normal mode and then just hit on the end one. You can see that it like, expands it or contracts it based on those normals. Now this really this also works with the soft selection. So if you just hit B, and you can hold down B and just drag on your screen to adjust the soft selection. This will do it sort of like based on your soft selection. This is really handy for thinning out or making objects that are more complex, uh, thicker or thinner. I use this a lot for this exact purpose. Maybe not for this organic stuff, but particularly for hard surface stuff. If you just you realize you have 30 pipes and they have the wrong radius, like Doing that by hand is a real pain in the ass. You can just select them and just just move them in but normal and you just thin them all out super quickly. So really nice tip there. One other cool thing, let's go to our marking menu here, is we have the multi-cut tool. So this is just holding on shift and the right mouse button when you're on an object. You just go to multi-cut. Turn off soft select. And the multi-cut multi -cut tool is just, you know, all around really good modeling tool that's quick and easy to use. This has gotten a lot better throughout the years. In the beginning, when they first introduced it, it was uh, something else. <laughs> um, let's say one cool feature that we that we discovered recently is if you have the multi-cut tool and you just press the middle mouse button at the same time, you can see it always snaps to the center of the two edges that you're in between. So you don't have to worry about, let's say if you hold down control, that's for doing the edge ring here or edge loop and shift, it like snaps and angles. And sometimes it can be a little hard to hit the exact center. But anywhere between these two and hit the middle mouse button, it just places a an edge in between. Mm, very nice. Uh, I didn't. I, I also didn't know about this until recently. And then <laughs> this is just sped up on modern model level for so <laughs> yeah. much ever since. So kind of segueing into that, one thing that's really common when you're, you're placing new loops like this is you end up with a loop that, let's say you want to make a really perfect surface, you're doing a car or something hard surface, you want something that really flows nicely here. Uh, they introduced a tool a couple of years ago, it's called the Edge Flow tool. So select an edge component, hold down shift and the right mouse button, and then edit Edge Flow. Now this 
I'm, just by pure magic, you know, it averages out where it's supposed to be. So this is the default sort of you bridge these two, you insert an edge loop, and then it looks at the other edges that come before and after to sort of figure out where should your edge lie between here. So yeah. Really super handy tool. I use this a lot when read topology. Like I, I just throw out some super illegal topology, and uh, <laughs> then I just use the edit edge for tool just to just make sure it's really nice and even. Yeah, it's an incredibly useful tool. Mapping is a hotkey in general, which we'll talk about in a bit, is very useful. So uh, a kind of two for one here. A new tool that they introduced in 2018 is the circularize tool. So Moto, I know Henning has told me about that before. Moto has had this tool for. A long years, time. like yeah. it's had it for <laughs> ten years or so. So what circularize is for is making circles on things. So two for one. The reason I'm saying that is uh, you'll see that in a moment. So if we select, let's say we select these here, and we want to make a hole in this, like a perfectly round hole. Before what you would have to do is kind of like move these things up there so they kind of like they're in a circle formation. Hmm. Now what you can do is you can just select the components. This can be. This doesn't have just have to be faces, it can be other components as well. Hold down shift, the right mouse button, and then you go down to circularize component. Now this just makes a perfect circle. Now this can be kind of annoying to select sometime. So if you're in selection mode, just in phase, object, whatever it is, hold down tab and you can kind of paint your selection around. Mm -hmm. so this is really quick if you want to have a quick, you know, just really quick selection. So circularize, and then what you can do from here is just extrude it in, extrude it down see here whenever you do anything hard surface this is this tool here you need this tool this here is beyond useful and there you're going to have a perfect hole without this you would have to do like what Morton was talking about you have to like just kind of move the verts around you would maybe have to snap into a cylinder and insert it there this is really useful also play around with the settings for the circularized tool as well they're quite useful yeah so if you want to let's do another test here just on top um, so again we go let's Guess that's kind of a marker menu as well. If you just hold down on an object, the right mouse button, you can go into any of the yeah. object modes. So let's go to face again. Just paint this out. Circularize. And then in here, like if it's messed up or if you want to mess it up, you could twist it around yeah. and you know play around with the settings and see what you can make out of this. It's really, really cool tool, actually. Good job, Maya. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So next up, we're gonna look at some custom hotkeys. So not all of these have to, have to be custom. Some of them are built into Maya. Some you might have to look for on the internet. Or if you know any Mel or Python, you can write your own. Really handy stuff. So if you go to Windows, Settings, and under Hotkey Editor, Maya, I think it was a couple versions ago, they introduced the Hotkey Editor. A Hotkey Editor which is really nice and user-friendly, unlike before. <laughs> it was terrible before, guys. <laughs> terrible. So, uh, what I've done, let me just show you how to make a new set real quick. So what you can do, Maya default will just be what you have. So select Maya default and you can hit duplicate. Just give it any name you want. I'll call this one test. And then under test, you can now start creating new hotkeys. I'm just going to go back to my hotkeys. So I only have a very few select hotkeys, um, just because I don't use a lot really. It's also really annoying if you hotkey too many things and then you go to you go to a different workstation. Yeah. Like we done that a lot when we've been going around teaching and like work, working at different computers at work. If you if you have like thirty hotkeys, you won't really be able to work on any other computers. So I do the same as Morton here. I might I might have like up to ten hotkeys max. Because if you get too dependent, you're just in trouble. Yeah. So some of the hotkeys that I have, let's just let's close this again. So is if I'm working with something, you know, maybe I have a lot of objects that are super close together and it's kind of hard to see. To Alt Q, I've mapped isolate selected. So this is just mm. this feature up here. You can map that to any hotkey that you want. Just quick in and out. You want to work on another object. You want to see what you're working on. This is super useful. Uh, another one kind of in that vein is the X-ray tool. So I have two different modes for x-ray. One is x-ray the entire scene, so I can see what's happening. The other one is just x-ray selected objects. So I've chosen to set this up um, on Alt-X. Alt-X is my selection, and Control-Alt-X is the entire scene, no matter what. So just super handy, super quick to just when you're doing complex objects. Yeah, you really want to set, set this up to a hotkey or a custom marking menu or whatnot. At least you want these two, two guys. Uh, at your convenience. Yeah. Uh, another one, let's see, 
two ones that are super useful is my align pivot to origin and then realign the pivot to the center or not just realign if if the pivot has been moved in any way you can always move it back to the center of the center, center of center of the object so let's just go back to the hotkey editor here and just set up a random hotkey so let's go back into our little test hotkey editor and let's see choose a custom so these are all mine these will just show up independently of, of where you are so these you have access to a bunch of hotkeys that are here you can search through them as well so let's say we wanted to set up scale for example you wanted to map scale to a different hotkey you just click here and then you just type in the key that you want yeah. Now, if you want to set up some more advanced hotkeys, someone maybe someone has made a script that does something repetitive and you want to map that to a hotkey, simply press the runtime command editor, create a new key or, or a new hotkey called test, give it a description, testing, and I usually just place it in the custom category. You can create a, a custom one here. I think, yeah, I've created a user category here as well, but you know. How, however you want to sort it. Then you just paste your command in here, whether it's Mel or it's Python, save the runtime command, and then apply a hotkey to it out here. This could be any script. Like any script you find, you can map to a hotkey like this. And the last bit of stuff we'll go through here is just some quick tips for, here we'll have something with the pivots. Now, this is again is something they recently introduced in a couple versions ago in Maya, is how to manipulate your pivot in a super nice way on the object. So if you hold down D, this is your sort of pivot editor. So now you can actually align your pivot to any component on your object. So if I wanted to align it to an edge, it just takes the average between this and this angle, or you have your faces, you can even align it to a, a vertex. So super handy stuff. If you wanted to, sometimes you want to snap on something, you don't want to have to go in precisely and click it. So if you hold down D and V, now, you can move your pivot around and it'll automatically snap to whatever component is around there. Another thing you can do is you hold down D and V and then you use the middle mouse button. It'll sort of snap to wherever your mouse or wherever your cursor is. So this is just really quick for selecting so you don't have to go into the middle of the transform gizmo and put it on your object. Another one is aligning stuff to your grid. So if you hold down D and X, so X, and again with the middle mouse button, we can just sort of place it on the grid. Now this isn't just for the pivot. You can do this with anything. So V now is gonna snap it to points here and holding down just X is gonna snap it to the grid. So now we're actually moving the object. Something like snapping tools, they, they might seem, it might seem like you're not really gonna use them a lot, but it's one of these tools you just end up using all the time for various things like uh, being able to, to just snap points around and say when moving the manipulator is something you will just keep using continuously as a modeler. So I highly recommend, like what Morton's doing here now, he's snapping two objects together. So first you just move your, you just move your pivot to a point and then you snap that point to another point. So you see there now quickly we can we can align things that really shouldn't be aligned or <laughs> could be hard to align yeah. before and then yeah. just sort of so now we know those points are perfectly touching right yeah so snapping really learn that so you uh, just just get used to using hotkeys for this yeah and another this is actually this is actually built into to Maya's so you don't even have to do anything it's the repeat key so. You can use this for a bunch of different things, but the repeat key basically repeats your last action, uh, your last tool action that was activated. So let's say we um, we selected some some vertices around here and we wanted to average. So hold down shift, right mouse button and go to average vertices. Now it averages in and then what you can do is you can just press G to keep reactivating the tool. You can do this with other things. Let's say you have to average something a hundred times or. 50 times or whatever. This is a really quick way to just go in and average it. Yeah, so. you just spam the G key like crazy. Uh, it's one of these tools you will just keep using all over and over and over again. The G key, best friend in Maya. So thanks so much for watching. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys later.